confidence out of them. You know, shake off the, that loss in the last game and just play like they did in the first round. I think the biggest question here is going to be how big of a pull are they going to do at this start here? I mean, we've seen all sorts of pulls. Uh, it's really dangerous pulling everything that they've just pulled. Sometimes we see them even going one step further with the Dragon Pack, but I think they're just going to park here. Already a death down from Big Luke, so we can see just how dangerous this trash can be. So many casters, so many things to interrupt. The bolts go out, they do a ton of damage. We have those AoE stuns players need to move out, especially if they go on melee, they lose a ton of damage because they got to go out, they don't want to stun the tank. They're just sitting there waiting. And you're having, you know, any kind of extra delays, for example, getting multiple stuns and things like that if they're not going to CC some of the uh, caster ads. So you're seeing Friends of Affixes does do that, while Lethal actually does not uh, CC the caster that ad there. on the side looks like it's going to go off for Lethal. And, oof, okay, somebody popped, popped it off at the time. very last second. DK is pretty primed to deal with some of this incoming damage. Of Vamp Blood being such a strong cooldown on Lethal's side. Amanda That's gets stunned oh, in the no. volcano. fired up just so low, barely hangs on. Uh, luckily, they don't have that extra caster. That could have spelled doom for someone. And and those Thunder Callers are just so dangerous, Jack. You know exactly why that AoE stun is just so irritating to deal with and just cuts you off from the fight so much. So much. And of course, if you do dispel it, it still stuns the target, if I'm not correct, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I mean, as, as you dispel it, it removes the stun from the target, thankfully. But what you're seeing here is just when you're having multiple ones going out, and the mm -hmm. big concern that you had there was actually Amanda didn't even have uh, the lightning strike on her, but was still stunned by one of her allies, and the volcanics were going out, and it was just kind of a compounding problem. But thankfully, you know, Lethal's damage was so strong that they were able to deal with them uh, before it really kind of became an issue at all. So both teams neck and neck here, of course. They're just about to pull the very first boss, Himdol, which, uh, you know, nothing too crazy here. He does have a frontal that we need to deal with. Be careful, the tank needs to point him away. The only trickiness to that is that you will need to navigate the three lanes across the boss as when he does do his horn call, which we'll see here momentarily after that dancing blade AoE, um, you will have to navigate them. And of course, a combination of that with the frontal could be lethal for a player. I mean, as that horn is going off, you're seeing I'm fired up, just going down immediately. He was not topped off in time. And you know, it was just really something that where he was just sitting on a very, very low amount of HP for such a long period of time. And he was not able to get topped off. Horn went off and just instantly killed him. So they're already having to burn a battle res very early on what should be, you know, fairly easy fight. But uh, Lethal is also in the exact same position where they just had to burn a battle res as well. But this is, a, I mean, that horn is particularly akin to having a disc priest, right? It's nice to be able to kind of pre-bubble everyone for that horn. It just does so, so much damage. So, uh, you know, a little little piece of information from you. I know you like to see uh, Himdol, of course, going down a bit lower for lethal. They should be able to clean him up. Uh, bear in mind, of course, for those at home, that Himdol does not actually die. You don't need to get him to 0%. He is actually a friend that wants to kill us. Um, you have to get him just down to 10%, after which he will then turn friendly again, and you're able to move on. I don't think that's a friends with an Aphex. <laughs> One bit, but you see lethal, of course, either dodging the last lanes that the uh, the dragon riders are flying on through, and they should be getting a uh, Himdal down in about the same time that you're going to see with Friends with Affix. Yeah, they're actually catching up a bit, Friends with Affix, as they are. Um, now, of course, these lanes that you dodge, the pool that you leave on the ground does do a lot of electrical, uh, nature damage, if you will. Those uh, swirling kind of cyclones that come through doing a, a ton of damage, so it's really important to kind of play Frogger with them. Make sure you avoid them, otherwise it will deal, uh, lead to a pretty electrifying situation. Himdol going down in a moment for Lethal, but another death on Lethal's side just prior to the boss uh, transitioning and finishing off the phase. That's another five seconds on the clock. Now they're going to have to deal with a uh, light trash pull followed by that heavy trash pull. Another death going down for friends with affixes as well. That's one thing we're talking about is that you know even if it is uh, not tyrannical, you're still seeing a lot of deaths. You're still seeing it's very very easy for people to be going down when you're not really expecting it at all. So you know the the affix combination while it's a little bit wacky, uh, it's definitely proving quite deadly so far. So this pull up here is the one that you know people are particularly scared of, especially on teaming. We're introduced to some new mobs like mystics that just have the ability to AOE heal their group, they need to be interrupted, they drop healing zones, they need to be moved. On top of it, now we have rune carvers that do channels and casts on various people that do tons of damage. So, I mean, the plan here, especially with this double warrior group, is quite obviously going to be, this is why they're so slow killing this group, is quite obviously going to be pull everything, AOE grip it, silence it, and just the warriors are going to go nuts on this pack. Yeah, it's definitely going to be, lethal is going to be the ones to watch here as they're diving into it, getting everything stacked up together, <laughs> seeing just all the damage that they can be pouring into the you know, Zeos is just destroying, they go into a 14 million damage, and then Druvian not to be outdone is also doing the same here. Yeah, and uh, just as we said, they're just carving through those mobs right now. Friends with Affixes taking a much slower approach to them. And of course, there's just so much maintenance needed in a pull this big with all of the various orbs going out. We're seeing so, so much value from the Boonkins here with that solar beam. It just silences the ad so well. 
you know, solar beam on top of multiple stuns, get all the grips in together. It was just a very, very strong pull, and it, and it made it look very easy. But the preparation that you're going into is making sure that you're getting that down to perfection. You're getting the you know the hard CC order out there, and you know. Amanda didn't even really need to drop the barrier in 2020 hindsight, right? But when you're not that sure, when you're looking at just how much damage can occur if the CCs are not working together, it was a very good move to make. Amanda sure also did not need to move out of that plume. Apparently, she does get clipped, only going down to 72%. She was pre-shielded. These Sentinel mobs are particularly dangerous in this dungeon as they have an aura that prevents any interrupts on uh, mobs around them. This is why you typically see them being pulled single-handedly. And you're seeing Lethal, of course, is moving on towards um, Fenrir side. Fenrir side, that's right, going for the Great Hunt. So it's going to be interesting to see you know, where Friends of FX is going to be going to uh, and the route that they're going to be choosing here. Because you can go to either side. You can be going to um, the Fenrir, of course, and the Great Hunt, or you could be going on to Hirja. Now, it's usually pretty typical for the groups that uh, we see commonly to go to Hirja's side first, uh, depending on how quickly you move. Um, and depending on how fast the run is, I. I think it's pretty unlikely that we will see another Bloodlust used until we get upstairs to Scovold. We'll just have to keep an eye on that. They could also just be clearing this pack out. It looks like they actually are going to Fenrir first. Otherwise, I'm not sure why they would clear this trash and then backtrack towards Herja. So we'll have to see where they go. And it looks like Friends with Affixes have pulled the similar pack on the side there as well. That's right, and instead of using a okay, KOE grip or something like that, you're seeing Friends of Affix just using a line of sight. There's tons of damage going now. Jason does drop down, and it's a very, very messy pull. It's going to be here, and it actually might be a wipe, and it is it really, be. really looking at it as a wipe, as, of course, Jason uh, does release. So you're having a you know, full team wipe that's going on here. Uh, Vim does actually get killed. His feign death was not very effective. Uh, I, maybe it was too effective. He feigned death <laughs> so hard, he actually, <laughs> he actually just died. died. Okay, so friends with Affix is full wipe, and we can see just how daunting this Affix combination is, even though there is no fortified. Uh, the teeming explosive combination, while you're having to dodge around randomly with Volcanic, is just a lot of maintenance needed for all these packs, because you have to just keep killing orbs so consistently. Lethal, of course, opting to go hug the right side of the, uh, the mountain here uh, on the way to Fenrir's first phase. We typically see teams as well kind of go past that water Buffalo down towards the lake and then uh, jump up from there. Either way, they cut it. I'm sure they've calculated their trash percentage needed. So they will be killing this pack and then, of course, moving into the face, uh, first phase of Fenrir, our uh, favorite dog boss in here. That's one of the nice things about this instance, though, is that you're able to see many different routes that are going to be uh, coming out from it, where you have so much control over which mobs you actually want to be pulling, the big risks that you want to be taking. And it's very nice, you know, you're seeing these things instead of, you know, more linear instances where you just end up having to pull, you know, X, Y, Z. So Fenrir himself, of course, has a few abilities that we need to watch out for. He has a 360 cleave that is split equally amongst players. They should have enough with just the DK and the two warriors in there to handle it. That howl that later will spawn wolves in the second phase. And of course, this leap that will jump on pre-assigned players. And once they, once he does reach that destination, he will AOE cleave the area and add a bleed stack to them. So you definitely want to make sure you're spread out, especially in melee, is not to receive multiple stacks. You see they're doing a very good job there. I mean, both warriors, of course, have a dot on them right here, but it's not that big of a deal. Of course, they do need to get Fenrir down uh, where he will then run away. I believe it's at, what, 70%? Uh, 60. 60%, sorry, thank you. And you'll run away, lick his wounds, and then you have a couple more small wolf packs to be able to take care of before you can uh, engage and finish him off. Yep, so he should be running away here soon. In the meantime, Friends with Affixes is opting to pull that double sentinel pull that guards the bridge leading up to the last two bosses, which Lethal will have to deal with later. So Friends with Affix is kind of getting an advantage in that sense, but of course Lethal so far ahead at this point in terms of already getting to Fenrir. You're seeing right here, you know, Lethal's just about finishing off Fenrir. Fenrir does run away, and, you know, instantly they're already moving in position towards the bridge, already moving on towards those wolf packs. So it's a very, very good show there. Uh, as Friends of Affix is, of course, just line assigning more mobs, trying to bring them all in, and having some pretty messy pulls overall. So here with these wargs, it is actually quite dangerous. The more you pull, the stronger they become because they do have kind of a, a wolf pack buff, if you will, where they buff each other's damage by 25% for every other wolf within, uh, I think, 10 yards, something like that, something very close. So they do a lot of damage, and they do leap on distant targets, uh, cleaving them at their location. So that is why you see the tank kind of kiting around the D&D &D with that 70% slow to make sure that they don't deal too much damage if they reach him. I mean, you're seeing just very, very good control. They're constantly using their stuns that are at their disposal. I mean, having double warrior and <laughs> just instantly just dropping them down super, super rapidly. So it's a very, very quick quick and clean way of getting them all down before they uh, face off against Fenrir once and for all. So Fenrir, of course, coming out of the doghouse here. We'll have to DPS him down. Now his shout will summon three of those wargs that we just saw, so we'll have to cleave them on top of the boss. And, of course, his main new ability here is that he will fixate a player later on and uh, DPS them for, I think, about three seconds, something like that. So the healer will have to focus them, make sure they heal them. 
otherwise they will need to kite them. But of course, by kiting him, you will lose a lot of damage. So I would assume that here we kind of see a pain suppression breakout, something like that, and a lot of healing pumping into that target. Yeah, but then that's what you're seeing. Actually, is Zeos is the one who's being focused by, so he has Dive of the Sword that's at the ready, so you don't even have to really be worrying at all about uh, the pain suppression being used. But if it was going to be another target, maybe it was going to be the, the Boomkin or something like that, uh, being able to go into bear form, and then you'd have to kind of evaluate from there, seeing how much damage are they actually going to be taking, you know, depending on the personals that Solar, uh, the Boomkin would be having from there. And uh, Friends with Ethics is actually opting to go for the more traditional route up towards Herja first. They're dealing with that penultimate, uh, actually the last pull prior to dealing with those two mini boss mobs on the side there. Of course, dealing with those explosives that come up. Meanwhile, Fenrir over here on Lethal should be dropping soon. And you've seen right now, uh, Zeus is getting chased down once again and just barely surviving. You're That's seeing a very, very stressful moment here by uh, for Amanda where they have Three, or sorry, two, three stacks and one, two stack that you have to take care of, and everybody else just has a one stack bleed. So you have so many huge bleeds. Zeus just needs to get topped off, but it's so, so hard to keep Oof. up with it. Druvian does go down here, and right now they just need to be able to finish off the boss. I mean, the you know, the Blood DK can add some support, of course, with that consumption 20% leech on everyone for 15 seconds, but that only goes so far. They do have the death. At least it cuts out a lot of that bleed damage. They are able to use that battle res, but that is still five seconds on the clock. Fenrir does go down. Of course, they will not be receiving that speed boost right right now because you need to down both of the bosses prior to getting that uh, rapid speed boost to move up to Skobold with. And that's just one of the scariest moments that was highlighted right there where you know, you're seeing the healer in such a stressful position where they just need to kill the boss now. And you know it may look like a little weird that they're using that battle res there, especially because their composition really doesn't have many. But I would rather make sure you get it down, you take care of it, you already are ahead in terms of getting more bosses down. Uh, you know, they're a little bit behind in terms of the trash count, but that will come a little bit later. But it's just making sure it gets down because the punishment, the price for actually not getting those mobs down or not getting that boss down is just too, too heavy to worry sure. about. Sure, so Lethal now backtracking all the way back to Herja's side, which is where we kind of, kind of see the end of the road that friends with Affixes have reached to try and pull Herja soon here. They're dealing with these two mini boss style mobs, which are uh, very pertinent to the abilities that Herja herself will have. One is a nature electricity buffed mob, the other is a holy mob uh, that will in turn empower her abilities, which we'll speak about in a bit when they do pull her. They're just now cleaning up the last mob, Omer. I mean, right here, you're seeing the Sanctify that's coming out. This is, a, this is an ability that's going to be copied over to the boss. So touching any of these little orbs that are coming out from them will also deal damage to your entire group. So it's very, very important that you're dodging them. And you, and you have a pr really highly mobile group here that you're able to take advantage of. Big, big pull down in the corner from Lethal right now. They're handling it well, though, seemingly. I mean, they've just, uh, as usual, you know, just the strength of that AOE grip with the beam combo, making sure they have that double warrior dealing mass, mass damage. You can see, of course, the damage meter is there. Friends with Affix is, in the meantime, of course, prepping to pull Herja. They will likely pull her to this nature damage side first. Her two abilities here are, of course, that Arcing Bolt and her AoE Thunderstorm, both of which will deal more and more damage the longer she stays here and uh, gets that nature beam channeled into her. It's very nice for uh, Friends of Affix's sake and that Warrior stake, for example, that it's not on Tyrannical. You know, the Arcing Bolts just deal ridiculous amounts of damage and as well as the uh, the storms that are going out right here. So it's very, very important, you know, just to be able to get everybody stacked in, get as much healing off as you can, and, you know, you have to really evaluate how well you're going to be able to deal with this. So, of course, you're seeing, you know, Jason is getting knocked to the other side of the room. That way it makes it a little bit easier for Hirsha to just walk over there uh, very, very rapidly. That way you're not having any kind of crossover with abilities. Right, you are. So, of course, that is the mechanic to switch over to the holy side. Her two abilities here being that uh, holy AoE pulse that we see on the player in the corner. It does bounce up to three times. And the last one is that Sanctify Jack that you pointed out on the trash. Similar boss ability. There are bigger gaps in this particular Sanctify, which allows you to get closer to the boss as a melee to DPSer. So there's no particular disadvantage with melee versus range on that ability. Right. Right here, you're seeing there's kind of a scary point where she's taking, um, uh -oh. yes, very scary <laughs> point where she's taking energy from both targets. So that's why ideally you're holding under the shield of the faith, waiting for her to knock you into the other side, making it that much easier for her to get uh, transitioned over. So this next Eye of the Storm is going to require just a lot of healing. Probably going to see the Trank going out uh, just in just a second here, making sure you're getting everybody topped off and in just as secure a position as you possibly can here. I mean, you see how much damage is dealing already, and this is not even on Tyrannical, so it's certainly not no joke of a boss in terms of the amount of damage it deals. Shield of Light will push... Um, we'll push Jason back to the other side for the final holy rotation that they're likely going to do, keeping an eye on those orbs. Lethal, of course, just now finishing up, dealing with those last two mini boss mobs in front of Herja. I mean, Lethal's just looking pretty strong right now. They only have three deaths compared to uh, Friends is now nine, um, and they're about to pull Herja. Keep in mind, Friends with affixes need to go all the way back to Fenrir at this point. 
And you're also seeing that Lethal's caught up quite a bit in terms of mob count here, where they have got the mob count, uh, they're almost at the mob count that they really need. They're taking care of the last two trash mobs before they're going up against Hir Hirja. So, you know, for the Affixes has to travel a very, very far distance without a speed boost, go all the way to Fenrir, kill first phase Fenrir, move on to the dog packs. You know, they have so much ahead of them that it's just really, uh, you know, it's really showing in uh, Lethal's favor right now. Keep in mind, Friends with Affixes has already killed those two Sentinels in, uh, leading up to the bridge to Skullvall. Now, I'm not sure if Lethal has. I didn't get a, a chance to so. see it. Uh, we'll, we'll def well, I definitely will see in a moment after they're done with Herja. They're just finishing Olmir now up, and they'll be prepared to pull Herja in a moment as well. Meanwhile, Friends with Affix is dealing with the last couple of packs prior to getting to the portal that will summon them to Fenrir's realm. Yeah, Friends with Affix is you know, no stranger to knowing the, uh, the clock that is on their head. They're you know, getting a pretty standard, pretty big pull here, uh, making sure they're able to get everything down as quickly as they possibly can so huge damage again the trend we keep on seeing very big damage coming out of the warrior when you're getting all these mobs stacked up together they just start obliterating them so easily so Hersha does come down now for Team Lethal. They do pull her over, as is typically seen, to that nature side. It's a bit less dangerous, of course, because you can spread out for that Arcing Bolt, which is why teams often start with that phase uh, rather than the Holy phase. In the meantime, Friends with Affixes has transitioned downstairs to Fenrir's Realm. It looks like they'll be doing a similar path here, hugging the right side of the mountain, then dealing with that three-pack prior to engaging Fenrir's first phase. I mean, right here, you're seeing you know, Lethal is about to go into the next phase. A mana dropping very, very low, and actually a mana going down. Uh, the damage just from the arcane, uh, the arcing bowl is just so so heavy, and you really just have to be able to watch out for that. You know, make sure that because it will split onto other targets if people are standing too close together. So oh, again, another death. <laughs> another death going out. So this is really not working out in Lethal's favor. You know, Lethal wants to play as safe as they possibly can here. They really cannot afford this, and I don't believe that, that was, they actually have another battle. Uh, res that's actually, they used it on Fenrir. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was just about to say. That is their last battle res for a while, meaning they will have to four man the rest of this boss. And I mean, there is just that chance that you get an arcing bolt on top of that light debuff and you just get you know just globaled almost uh, depending on how higher stacks are they are moving over now to the other side amanda taking that pulse damage bounces over to solar power and they'll be ready for the next eye of the storm cast oh solar actually death. going down there and just it's such a huge concern and this is where you have to play super super crazy safe because you have three people left to kill this boss and you have a lot of hp to chew through so this is really just putting um you know it may be the thing that friends of the apex just needs in order to get back into the driver's seat here <laughs> Amanda just got so low from that arcing bolt. Um, <laughs> Reese defensives. Yeah. Uh, Genera is now not pushed over to the other side, uh, as he likely did pop IBF, which will prevent that knockback. Um, Parks over on the holy side, of course, forces a transition nonetheless. Well, now he'll have to deal with that Sanctify. Easy dodges Amanda, having her work cut out for her with all of these uh, light bounces all over the place, plus an arcing bolt probably coming out of this Sanctify in a moment. And right here, you're seeing you know, Amanda is taking this posture of being a lot more safe than uh, she was earlier. She's taking advantage of Clarity of Will, and she's playing you know, very, very safely with it. In you know, Clarity of Will, you have the option between Shadow Covenant, which is uh, more AoE-based, or you could be using Clarity of Will, which is, is a stackable uh, shield that's going out. So she's doing a very, very good job of making sure she's just stacking shields on everybody because you have to play so, so safe, especially as you're going into this next thunderstorm, and you have to you know, make sure you have coverage on everybody. There's lots and lots of Shadow Men healing going out, and that's actually one of the fortunate things no. uh, at this point is because there's so few targets available, you're not really worried about atonement healing. You're just taking advantage of the uh, shadow. Man. No, I mean the boss is dying so slow. Do you think mana is a concern? I mean, it looks like she is quite low on mana currently. Absolutely. And what you're seeing right here is just she's just smiting because smiting is just going to be mana positive here. You're getting whatever kind of shielding, whatever kind of extra mana that you're able to get out. Uh, I believe she's running Mindbender, so she just popped Mindbender there to get a little bit more mana back. But it's, it's a very precarious position because you want to make sure that you're getting any kind of extra shielding that you're able to with Clarity of Will. Clarity of Will costs a lot of mana and you're making sure that you're just trying to get any kind of extra atonement healing uh, that you possibly can while sustaining your mana. So she just got our Arcane Torrent back, got mine better mana a little bit, so she should be good here. So they should be able to pull this kill off, even though they lost a ton of time, of course, without those two DPS. In the bottom right, we do see Friends with Affixes having now pulled Fen Rear. We know all of the mechanics that uh, we dealt with earlier, as we saw on Lethal's side, pretty easily dealing with him. Uh, the leaps do go out on Fen Rear's side. He's already down to 43%, bearing in mind, of course, that he does start the second phase at 60% HP. Well, you're seeing right here, Lethal's getting themselves regrouped. They're at 79% of mob count as, of course, you know, Friends Affix is, is kiting out the uh, Fenrir, just trying to escape from the fixate that's going out here. So, the Friends Affix is, you know, again, they're not quite back in the driver's seat, but they do, um, they, they do have a bit of an advantage in terms of a little bit more in the way of mob count. Uh, and again, like you're talking about the Sentinels, 
uh, the lethal has not killed yet. Friends of FX already has. Yep, so they do have to uh, have a bit of a time dump there, and keep in mind, once Fenrir dies, they will be getting that speed boost, so allow them to very quickly return and go up the bridge. Now, we do know that the kings upstairs do give some percentage each. This is a, uh, of course, uh, it is a teaming environment, so they will need a higher uh, percentage prior to going up the bridge. I believe it's something in the range of 13 to 12% that they can have left over going upstairs on teaming, where it's typically almost 16% in a non-teaming environment. So there's a bit more trash that Friends with Affixes will need to clear prior to going up the bridge. Yep, and right here you're seeing Friends of Affix is just getting uh, Fenrir down. They're waiting for their speed buff, and now they're just, you know, racing as fast as they possibly can to go up to, uh, you know, the second and last boss here. So it really is coming down to be pretty close, uh, and it's actually quite interesting to see that the death differential has gotten a little bit closer here, and with the last two bosses, it really can close very quickly. Yep, so I like what Lethal is doing here. They kind of got the mobs low, allowed the dots to take on them, especially with that shield going up, and they just started going up the bridge right away, letting those sentinels follow behind them. They'll finish them up here, and it'll likely give them just enough percent uh, as much as is needed to finish off the Kings and get 100% uh, before they go to Skovald and Odin, which are just back-to-back -back bosses to finish off the dungeon. And right here, they're starting off at the, the farthest most right uh, of the mobs. You know, the mobs, of course, the, these Kings will be buffing each other as they die. So, you know, choosing the, the correct route, watching out for any of the extra interrupts here, and you're seeing the Sentinels are appearing as they're finally making their way back up the bridge here. So they have very, very low HP, uh, and it's very, very easy to just be able to cleave them down as you're going. You see, you know, the roots instantly going out by the Honored Ancestors, and Friends of FX is, of course, running up the bridge and trying to catch up. Right, you are, and I do like that they're starting to kite King Tor towards the next king that they're planning on uh, aggroing here. It saves them a lot of time with that travel, as we said. Friends with affixes, as you mentioned, as well as now moving upstairs to the kings, they should be okay on percent, too. I think they should get over that 12 point, whatever percent they might have. We don't see the decimals on that. Likely not up to 13. They do kill that first king and are now pulling the second one in a moment. And you're having, you know, of course, they're prioritizing the... Furthest most to the right, then they're going to the furthest most to the left. So we're seeing, you know, how uh, Friends of FX is, of course, is going to choose their order here and, you know, how much variance that you're going to be seeing going out. Because you, you do have to deal with you know, compounding um, buffs that are going out here. So, you know, one of them, for example, the Unholy Yell, you have to make sure you interrupt. Just deals incredible amounts of damage. Likely we'll get some deaths in there. So they're starting off with the Ancestors. Um, Make it a lot easier. But Friends of FX is, of course, fo focusing on the, uh, the Yeller first. <laughs> <laughs> old Yeller. Old Yeller to put an old Yeller down. <laughs> Of course, the answer alert. <laughs> Whoa. Of course, the ancestors that they do summon very slowly make their way their way towards the caster that summoned them. In, in this case, uh, the king Ranulf. Uh, if they do reach him, they do heal him for I believe 10% of his health, something like that. Definitely something you don't want near the boss. That's why you're seeing the rooting and the kiting around of the king. Now, when they deal with these last two kings, of course, both of them will have, as you mentioned, the previous abilities that we saw. So they will have that unruly yell, and they also will have the ancestor summon along with the sever and the dagger uh, throws. The dagger throws of course being on a random party member and the sever being a tank debuff that if it lands it will debuff the tank with the 20 percent stacking increasing damage taken right here you're seeing that uh, lethal is just a little bit ahead in terms of just the death differential and in terms of you know mob count and timing and stuff like that so it'd be very very interesting to see how scovald and odin will come down because i believe we've only seen halls of valor once this tournament so far if i remember right uh, yeah, yeah, once, maybe twice. I mean, I, look, I can't remember what I ate for <laughs> breakfast, so. Um, <laughs> Friends with Affix is still finishing off. I believe that is their last two kings as well, if I'm yes. not mistaken, so it's quite close. There is a four death differential between them. We just had another recent one on Friends with Affixes. That certainly might come into play towards the end of the dungeon with how close the two, these two teams are. They will both hit that 100% mark once these kings are dead. I mean, you're seeing right there, uh, you know, Amanda was getting a shackle undead on one of the mobs, just locking it down so you don't even have to worry about it. You know, they're getting a drink, they're getting prepared here, and Skovald is about to rear his ugly head. Uh, and <laughs> very and, interesting boss. And indeed he is. Genera picks up that Aegis that we spoke about last time, which is why you're here for the Pillar of Eternity in order to capture it and defeat the evil uh, Ghoul Dan, as we know, or as anybody who pays attention to lore <laughs> knows. Game. Yes, exactly. So we'll have to spend some time now listening to God King ramble on about God knows what. I can never understand him. In a moment, then he will will be uh, aggroable by the group. And I wouldn't be shocked to see, oh, actually they still have their Bloodless debuff, so likely they'll have it up for Odin. So Gon God King Skovald, of course, does have that Ragnarok ability, a huge AOE cast, in which the tank will use that Aegis of Agrimar that they picked up in order to make sure that they keep their party safe, after which the King himself will grab that shield and spawn some adds as well. You're seeing a very good preparation by Amanda, just getting some clarity of wills out, uh, you know, filling in that extra, you know, 
empty time that goes out because you will have that Fellblaze rush going out on different targets. So, you know, it's very, very important to be able to prepare for the damage as best as you can. But when it's going out on random people, you just have to be prepared for anything. And you're seeing, of course, that, that you're talking about the Aegis of Magrimar, the shield going up to defend against uh, Skovald's, you know, big Fell mortars that are going out on the entire group. So it is important to uh, know as well that Fell rush, uh, it, that's why you cast the shield at the very last second, the Aegis, in order to make sure that he does cast one of his two special abilities, one of them being that Fell rush that AoEs everything in an area, hits very, very heavily, or the Savage Blade on the tank, either of which will be defended. Uh, actually, especially the the uh, Fell Rush will be defended if you're still within the confines of that Aegis, which is why the Castle Blades that they played it perfectly there. These Flames of Woe, as we mentioned, that he does summon, will spawn fire patches on the ground, and of course they themselves also spawn explosives, so they have to be careful for that. We have to be very, very careful here, and you're seeing, of course, uh, Genera picking up the Aegis Agrimar again, and they're getting ready for another Ragnarok, which will be happening pretty soon. And you're also seeing um, a very, very similar percent, I think. Uh, Friends of Affix is actually was pulling ahead Lots in terms of, of the overall damage, and they started a good, you know, 10 yeah, seconds later. Yeah, Lethal certainly started first. I mean, they're just taking ages to kill this boss right now. Meanwhile, Friends with Affix is currently pulling ahead further and further, and after this, there is no more trash. It's straight to Odin. There's just a bit of RP. You talk to Odin, and you start his trial. And both teams are going to be having Lust available for them, so it really, you know, at this point, you really just have to be stepping up your damage as best as you can here. Everyone's getting spread out, you know. Uh, Amanda is still playing it quite safe, of course, with the Clarity Wills, because it's very, very easy to get someone dropped very, very low here, but... Now, keep I'm in mind, Friends but. needs this damage, needs to catch up, because they also have a four-death differential right now, so they need to overtake at least 20 seconds. Yeah, you're seeing, you know, just... The three death differential that's out there, you really have to be very, very conscious of that, because even if they're killing it a little bit faster, they still have to ha make up for that lost time. Dude, they just crushed that. Yeah. They just crushed that. So now they got to wait, of course, friends with affixes for Odin to jump down. He will as well blab a bit, congratulating you for killing the evil Skovald of Mordor. Once he's done with that, you're able to start the encounter. Druvian going down on lethal side. Certainly not a death they needed. They're now up to eight deaths. There's only two death differential, and they're just falling further and further behind at this point. They don't have a battle res. I mean, they're going to need to really pull it big here on Odin, which friends with affixes will be momentarily starting. I mean, you're seeing it, that was just the death that they really just cannot afford. It was surprising with having double warrior, having that double execute you take advantage of that, you know, <laughs> Reza Affix is actually just able to take a large advantage. They were able to just burst past it. It was incredible. Yeah, you would have thought that the double uh, the double execute instead would have played in Lethal's favor, which it won't, of course, on Odin. We do know, similar to Helia, he does start at 100% health. However, you don't actually need to get him to 0%. He will finish the encounter at 80.5%, somewhere in that range. So execute, certainly not a story here outside of the small add that he summons which does need to be cc'd or interrupted to make sure it does not get its aoe cast off if it does then successive casts will cast faster and faster until it'll wipe the raid uh, the party it's very very scary to be you know watching out for these surge that are coming out because a lot of times you're having this large aoe that's coming out from the boss you need to get out some kind of interrupt on him even if you're able to not not able to run up and kick him so you know it's something that's nice when you're having multiple range you're able to get the you know the solar beam off on him get him focused down very very quickly uh before of course the rune game is going to begin so of course he does spawn these spears shatters them and now indeed we will have to match the correct colors and shapes to their apparent runes on the ground after which we will get a 30 second buff that increases your damage and healing by 50 percent this is when groups will be laying it down on the line doing as much damage as they can to try and one phase him down to that 80.5 percent lethal in a moment coming up to that point as well I mean, you're seeing Lethal just trying to catch up as best as they can. And keep in mind, there still is just a two-death differential here. So Lethal has a tiny bit of breathing room, but they really need to be, you know, ready in position to pick <laughs> up the room whenever they can. <laughs> Odin just one and a half percent or so away down uh, from going down for friends with affixes. In the meantime, Lethal just getting their buff here in a moment, getting ready to burn damage. They're make sure they move out of that AOE so that they don't have a last-second choke and die. Odin should be going through in a moment here for friends with affixes. Meanwhile, Lethal will have a 10-second buffer to try and finish off the boss friends with affixes is indeed done lethal has to kill this within the next few seconds otherwise they will be going home it's all on lethal right now dealing as much damage as possible their backs are against the wall and this is the last game to decide who is going to be going on to the grand finals oh, here it's all just about the damage that can be dealt there <laughs> and they want to be able to <laughs> get as much damage that's, as it. that's, that's it. it that's friends with affixes they complete Whoa. the reversal <sighs> off of the back of lethal's map wow what a show, man. They that was, that was they turned that man. series around just like like that. That simple. I mean, that was you know, there's there's